This is Chris with Dive Zone Scuba for another technical diving tips, techniques, and trips video. Your instructor or dive team may prefer different decompression regulator configurations than those shown in this video. As always, we recommend using the most appropriate decompression regulator configuration for your particular situation. All right, so uh, by now, uh, anybody that's watching this video uh, would know that um, uh, most regulators can be used uh, with up to 40% um, oxygen, uh, and uh, there's generally not a problem with that. Uh, to have an oxygen um, regulator or a decompression regulator uh, in service with more than 40% uh, O2, it's uh, generally recommended that the uh, regulator be oxygen clean uh, and in addition to being oxygen clean uh, which means that there are uh, oxygen compatible lubricants such as um, trio lube and um, uh, things of that sort in there uh, that there's also the use of uh, Viton o-rings versus uh, regular rubber o-rings uh, so um, in addition to having oxygen service uh, cleaned um, uh, regulators uh, the other issue that you have with regulators, both uh, in components of the um, first stage in particular and also, uh, but to perhaps a lesser extent with the second stage, is the material that it's made out of. So if you have a regulator that is made out of uh, titanium, you definitely do not want to use that as a decompression regulator that could have uh, any higher content greater than 40%. Uh, in fact, um, there was uh, a Mari's first stage regulator and second stage regulator uh, that um, uh, was not recommended for use with any type of nitrox at all. So uh, your regulator needs to be oxygen clean uh, for higher percentages of 40% or higher and it also needs to be made of um, oxygen compatible materials. Uh, this is one of the reasons why um, many times when we go on a trip what we'll do is we'll specify that our low O2 decompression gas be 40% um, or less and many times 32 and 36 is readily available uh, from a bank system or a nitrox generator and um, we don't have to go to any special blending procedures to get um, 32, 36 or uh, to a lesser extent 40. Here are three basic types of first stage regulators that can be used for uh, decompression uh, regulator sets and um, on the left uh, what we have here is a diaphragm type regulator uh, and this type of regulator uh, has um, fixed ports uh, on one side with a high pressure port and uh, is symmetrical on the other side so there are many different types of regulators uh, that uh, fall in this particular category uh, in the center uh, is a piston regulator uh, which has a turret uh, on the bottom of the, uh, the regulator and uh, we're going to discuss uh, in a minute why this is particularly desirable to have. And then on the right uh, we have um, a rather unique regulator that has not reached full production yet. Uh, this is the, um, the X-Deep regulator which is a diaphragm regulator. Uh, which has a rotating turret. Uh, there are some other regulators uh, of this sort, uh, namely the Diverite uh, XT1, and uh, that particular regulator uh, has the turret oriented uh, in the axis with the, uh, the rest of the regulator. So uh, the turret in here is uh, in line with the, uh, the DIN uh, fitting, whereas on some of these other regulators, uh, like the dive right and a few other regulators um, that are OEM regulators, they will have the turret on the side here. All right, so um, we have these basic three types of regulators. Now, one of the issues with a decompression regulator uh, is that um, you want to have uh, your hose and your second stage regulator stowed in a very neat manner uh, alongside the tank. Uh, however, when you use the decompression regulator uh, in a normal manner, um, the hose actually needs to come out uh, differently uh, at a 90 degree angle. 
So if you have one of these uh, regulators on uh, a decompression tank and uh, the regulator is facing down like this, or, then the hose will go down and up. Uh, but the problem is, is that when you're actually going to use it in use, you need the hose coming up like this. Uh, so uh, we generally uh, try to avoid using regulators, first stage regulators with fixed, uh, with fixed ports. This is why uh, regulators like this. Uh, this is actually an atomic uh, regulator uh, with the turret um, and um, the uh, Scuba Pro Mark 25 is, um, is similar. Uh, they have turrets on the bottom uh, of the regulator and so what happens is you can store the hose alongside the regulator um, uh, the hose alongside the tank going down this way and then when you're going to deploy it and pull it out you can then rotate the hose up like this so that you'll have more of a, um, uh, a cleaner uh, a cleaner feed to uh, the hose uh, going around your neck so then uh, back to this one back to the X-Deep regulator uh, the reason why this is uh, unusual is the fact that um, this particular regulator has the ability through the use of a locking pin here uh, to uh, actually use this regulator uh, successfully um, in a variety of applications. So uh, one of the applications is as a normal back mount regulator and then another one is uh, because it has a turret uh, it can be used uh, very easily as a, um, a decompression regulator with the optimum um, uh, feed angle here. Okay, so these are three basic um, considerations for uh, regulators. Um, there are plenty of people who uh, use first stage regulators for decompression purposes that have fixed ports and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. However, many people will prefer to have a cleaner um, layout uh, with the tank uh, uh, and the hose where you're going to need to have a um, rotating turret either with a piston or with a uh, diaphragm with a diaphragm regulator design. Oxygen considerations can also be an issue with uh, second stage regulators and uh, on my left I have a conventional regulator, an Atomic Z2. Uh, so this regulator uses uh, brass and chrome and more conventional methods uh, and uh, can be used uh, for oxygen service with high decompression gases uh, but uh, it is best if it is oxygen cleaned um, in order to do that. On the right uh, is a regulator specifically designed for higher O2 content. This is the Atomic M1 regulator. And uh, in this particular case, the M1 regulator is uh, recommended uh, to be used by Atomic uh, with up to 3,000 PSI, but only up to 80% um, O2 content. Uh, in uh, many uh, certification agencies um, literature there's always a big discussion about the, uh, the O2 content. Uh, what makes this different uh, versus this uh, is the use of metals uh, such as Monel uh, and um, stainless steel uh, rather than brass. One thing you definitely want to avoid uh, in a regulator either the second stage or the first stage is the use of titanium which is not uh, specifically compatible with um, uh, high O2 content blends. Another deco regulator consideration uh, has to do with the hoses. Uh, we prefer to uh, have color coded hoses uh, when we dive um, with multiple decompression tanks and so for example the low O2 uh, regulator uh, will generally have a yellow hose whereas the high O2 regulator uh, will have a green hose so that is just another um, uh, thing to make your dive uh, safer uh, although uh, it's not uh, strictly required. Um, another issue about the hoses for decompression regulator sets uh, is that the hose generally has to be much longer than with a regular uh, regulator uh, and so these are 40 inch hoses and so we find that um, 40 inch hoses work the best. Uh, one of the other reasons for that is 
Uh, it's not uncommon for us to uh, uh, to do a right hand uh, O2, 100% O2 carry, and the extra couple of inches uh, afforded by the 40 inch hose allows you to do that. So uh, with the 40 inch hose, you can either do it as a left carry or a right carry. Uh, you have sufficient um, regulator hose length uh, to be able to do that. So two considerations for regulator hoses. One is the color and the second one is the length. A completely different type of regulator uh, is uh, this regulator uh, that is manufactured by uh, or assembled by uh, Dive Right. Uh, so uh, this is a um, uh, oxygen specific regulator and uh, what it is it uh, has an inexpensive first stage which is actually unbalanced and so what uh, Dive Right suggests in their user manual is that this particular regulator uh, not be used below 50 feet. So uh, this is uh, not necessarily a um, big disadvantage uh, because most of the time when you're going to be using a regulator like this uh, it's actually going to be used for 100 percent oxygen uh, which shouldn't be used deeper than um, uh, 20 feet or so. Uh, sometimes people use uh, slightly lower mixes of O2 uh, like X80 and so this could also be used for example uh, with uh, X80. So this particular regulator uh, obviously doesn't have a turret uh, and it also has a very rudimentary button gauge uh, when uh, uh, in most cases uh, we find it uh, preferable to use a uh, full gauge uh, like this uh, on a short hose rather than a button gauge that fixes directly to the first stage. This is however an option um, uh, for uh, decompression uh, gases, uh, high O2 decompression gases um, uh, for shallow depths. Our preferences based on our experience is that decompression regulators should be oxygen cleaned. They should be manufactured and use oxygen compatible materials. The first stage can be either a diaphragm or piston. Uh, that does not matter so much over the fact that it does need a turret. And lastly, the regulator should use color-coded 40-inch hoses. A final consideration for uh, decompression regulators uh, is the uh, fact that uh, in discussions with um, a number of other divers on the subject of decompression regulators, uh, many divers think that it's okay to use a spare uh, regulator that is not currently being used uh, as a decompression regulator. Uh, so very frequently this uh, decompression regulator is uh, a lower standard regulator than the diver might actually use for their bottom gas. And uh, we think that that's not the correct approach, uh, but that the decompression phase of a serious technical dive is just as important as uh, the bottom uh, portion of the dive. So we prefer to use the same high quality uh, first and second stages uh, for uh, the decompression sequence of any dive uh, as we do for the bottom gas um, portion of the dive. This is Chris with Dive Zone Scuba. Thanks for watching. I hope this video uh, was helpful. And please subscribe.